All right, y'all. Happy Saturday. A little bit later today, I just had a lot of stuff to do. There is a bird that has been screaming all morning long. I don't think it's very happy, so. I did get a lot of work done this weekend on the porch, and we put up a little bitty pool for the kids. Just something temporary because it's hot. And last year, you know, we lost our pool, our really nice pool. So I was like, let's, we gotta put up something for the kids and me because it's hot and I'm trying to walk. So that's what we read upon for right now, trying to just a temporary fix. But anyway, I did work on the porch. It's nice to have a more organized place to walk, but let's get into it. Happy Saturday. I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to Haggai. Haggai chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. It's kind of lengthy, so here we go. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. In Haggai, in the beginning, he says that, I know, I believe, and I believe, I know twice, but I want to say three separate times he says, consider your ways. Think about, in other words, think about what you're doing. Think about, think about what you're doing. And let me give you my thoughts and then we'll go into it. And I need to tell you, if you've never read Haggai, it's one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. Let me tell you just really quickly what the issue was and what he was called to prophesy to these people about. So it'll give you some context for this scripture because he talks about them doing all this stuff for themselves. But they're not satisfied is, is his point. He was responsible for reigniting their passion to rebuild the house of the Lord. That's what they were supposed to be doing. God moved on them. His they had returned from exile, I believe. Everything had been destroyed and God needed a house and they weren't motivated to build God's house back. Instead, they focused on their houses. He goes in and talks about you. God said, you put a lot of effort into your house. You put a lot of effort into your things and you neglect mine. You are building your own kingdom, but you're neglecting mine. I'm getting ahead of myself there. But that's where we're headed. And he got on to them for it and said, rebuild my house. Rebuild my house, okay? So I, I said, these people were more concerned about their own houses and stuff than God's house and his stuff. Oh, when I write sometimes, it's hard to, to read. And he would, oh, and he was very displeased. God was displeased. He commanded them to rebuild and to put their efforts into his house and then he would bless them in their endeavors and he would accept their offerings and he would make it as glorious as it was the first time. So if you read Haggai, he begins with a convicting statement about you're doing all this, self, this stuff for yourself. You're doing all this for yourself. You're building this house for yourself. You're acquiring wealth for yourself. You're, but you just neglected my things, my call my house. You've neglected all of that because you're only out for yourself. They do get convicted and God begins to deal with them and they do lay the foundation. Then the people get discouraged because when the temple was built the first time, it was magnificent. I mean, it was, it was a sight to behold. They got discouraged because they know that no matter what they do, the second one won't be as good as the first. And then Haggai starts to deal with them about that. And if you read, God reassures them because he says, I own all the stuff. I own the gold. I own the silver. I own all the stuff. If you will be obedient and you will, uh, if you'll build, I will make it, you know, it will be as wonderful or greater than the former. So the latter can be just as good or greater than the former. So he comforted them in their endeavor because it was discouraging that no matter what they did, they didn't have the resources that they had previously. They didn't have the stones and they didn't have all of this. But God said, I do. You just listen to me. I have it. I will supply it 
You just have to obey me and do. Stop trying to figure out where the gold's going to come from. Tr Stop trying to figure out how it's going to be built and comparing it to the former because that was the problem. They kept comparing their future and their endeavor to the former. And he got onto them for it, right? And these are the three things that were listed in my Bible that Haggai prophesied against these people about. And then we'll talk about it just for a moment. I'll let you go. Haggai prophesied against people who neglected God's things. And it said they were lazy. Slothful people who worked towards their own personal gain and neglected God's stuff. And this is what I this is what I'm going to say about that. There is room to do both. Meaning living for God and serving God doesn't mean that you can't have a job. Doesn't mean that you can't work hard and pay for a home to live in or a car to drive. That's not the point. And I implore you to look at this with a mature spiritual I and not an immature one because that's not the point. So don't take it and make it something that it's not. But we really need to think about if we acquire great things and we have these things, we spend a lot of time on our stuff. We spend a lot of money on our stuff. We put a lot of effort into our kingdoms. I labeled this Kingdom minded. Kingdom minded. Mean, meaning giving God the glory. Reaching for God's things over ours. He told them literally, if you will reach for my, seek ye first my kingdom. If you will do my things, I own it all. I will take care of your things. So we have to be careful that we don't get those priorities out of order and build our own kingdoms and neglect God's call, neglect God's stuff, neglect God's kingdom. I mean, as just some wild, wild example, I say wild, this is just a pretty logical example. If you put lots of money into your home, but you put nothing into the church, you might, I mean, let's just, I don't know. I don't know, Haggai would say, Think about it. Consider your ways. You can't repair things, but you would never let them go broken at your home. Or, you know, like you don't spend time doing my things, but you make plenty of time for your hobbies. So we have to keep that in balance and perspective. It does that mean there's something wrong with having a nice home and taking care of it? No. Does that mean that you can't have a hobby? No. But with all things temperance, is the right way to go and so we shouldn't put our things above god's things is the point Haggai prophesied against that he also prophesied so lazy laziness was in there too you know living for god and working in the kingdom is you can't be lazy not do it right you can't be lazy nobody said all of the jobs were fun I mean, there's a certain level of joy that comes with it, pleasing the Lord and helping others and doing what you're called and asked to do by God. But there are some things that are just tedious in their work. There are some things you just do because it's the right thing, regardless of what you want to do. There are times when you sacrifice what you want to do to do what God has asked you to do or to do what you're supposed to do. And then you can make time later for what you want to do. Haggai also prophesied against self-centered people and self-centered efforts. That's where, to me, the kingdom-mindedness comes in. I'm not here to build my own legacy. I'm not here to build my name. I'm not. I'm not here to build something that I can hold on to. I'm not here to build something that is my identity. I have to 
we have to be here to further the kingdom. And the kingdom goes so far beyond us and our little corner of the world. It goes so far beyond my home. It goes so far beyond my community. It goes beyond my state. And believe it or not, it extends outside of America and it goes to the world. The kingdom, the church is one. There's only one bride. There's only one church. Brother Tenney said it really well when he said, I don't want to have fewer brothers and sisters in Christ than God has children. The math ain't mathin'. The kingdom extends way beyond us. And we're working to promote the kingdom everywhere. It's not a self-centered endeavor. It's not what serves me. It's not what makes me feel good. It's not what provides the best living for me. It's not what is the most comfortable or convenient for me. It has to be first and foremost. What serves the kingdom? What helps promote the kingdom? What contributes to lost souls being saved? What does that? And then my feeling about that can come secondary after God has dealt with me and helped me to overcome whatever self-centeredness that we're born with because it's there and we all have it. And he can help us deal with that building our own kingdom situation and let go of that. There's a freedom in it, but it's also to me where the miraculous happens. The last thing Haggai prophesied against was discouragement about the former things. It's easy, it's easy. When God calls you to do something, to compare it to the former and to become discouraged. Lot's wife looked back. He told her, don't look back. Don't look back. I called you out. I removed you. Don't look back. But she had some stuff back there. She had some stuff. She had some friends. She had a life that she had built. She had some family. And she looked back. I talked about that last year in that walk, Don't Linger. Even Lot had a hard time letting go because of his connections and because of his family and because it was a difficult thing to do. And the Bible says that God being merciful, got an angel, took him by the hand and took him out because it was difficult for him to move, to make the step to move, to go. And his wife looked back because I'm sure she's flesh and she remembered the former. And just like these people, began to compare whatever it was that God had asked them to build. We don't have the materials. We don't have the things that we had before. We don't have what they had when they built your temple. We can never build a new temple as great as the first one. So why try? And that's when he tells them, number one, that's not the point. Comparing the former to the latter is not the goal, and it's not what I asked you to do. I asked you to build. I asked you to obey and build. And he says, I own all the materials. I will make sure that they're there. Being kingdom-minded just says, God, you first. You over me. You over my desires. You over what I want. You over what feels good. You over what's convenient. Even when I don't have the materials, even when I don't know how, even when I don't know that I have the strength to build, you didn't ask for me to find the materials. You didn't ask for me to make it as good as it was formerly. He just asked them to build. And that first scripture, he points out to them, because you have neglected to do what God has asked you to do in build, rebuilding his house, and you're so focused on you, you, don't, you drink, but you're not, it's not enough. You eat, but you're not full. You have clothes, but they don't keep you warm. And you're making money, 
but it, you're putting it into bags with holes. And he basically told you, you won't be successful. You won't be successful until you accept that I come first. I come first. That's what God said. I come first. My kingdom comes first. My things come first. And if you'll put me first, I will take care of the rest. What a way to live. And they did. They did build. They did. They obeyed. And they were blessed for it. And God took care of them. I hope that's an example to us today. I want it to be an example to me to be kingdom minded, not self centered, not self seeking, not self serving, not controlling. It's not about me and it's not about you. It's about the kingdom. And the kingdom is big. And the kingdom crosses all territorial boundaries. And it's worth our time, our t attention, and our efforts to do what God's asked us to do. To promote His kingdom and to help the body and to build. See you next Saturday.